Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. Good evening. A popular San Antonio attraction, the target of vandalism. Parts of the San Antonio River Walk defaced by graffiti, positive messages being sent in a destructive way. The night team Stephen Cavasso spoke to some visitors today who feel the graffiti sends the wrong message about the Alamo City. That doesn't make good sense. I mean, why would you deface such a pretty place? It's disgusting, really. Mike Miller's first time on the San Antonio River Walk was not what he hoped for. Miller is visiting from Luling and wanted to stop by the popular tourist spot. But instead of a peaceful stroll, he was met with this. I think San Antonio is a beautiful city, but that's, I guess, my opinion. Obviously, these people don't seem to think so. The vandalism caught the attention of others who walked by the spot near Navarro Street and St. Mary's. Antonio Richardson is a San Antonio native. She says although some of the messages are uplifting, this is not what her city is about. It's still so unfortunate to to face such a beautiful place that we share in this city. Richardson says she is aware that times are tough, but says there are other ways to express those emotions. I wish people would find a different kind of outlet to be creative and um, just not on our beautiful river walk. Now, it's not clear when that graffiti or vandalism took place, but just take a look. These are just some of the messages that we continue to see out here along the San Antonio Riverwalk. But Tim Courtney, the good news is the city tells us they have been made aware of the issue and they actually have to plan to have this area cleaned up by tomorrow. Now, Park Police is investigating, but if you have any information, contact 210-207-8283. We're live tonight along the Riverwalk. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Tim Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. New on the night beat, a robbery ends with a shooting over on the far north side. This all happening at the Stone Ridge Market Shopping Center off of Highway 281 near Evans Road just before 6 p.m. San Antonio police telling us a man was robbed and shot in the parking lot between PetSmart and Phoenix Salon Suites. We're told the victim is in his 20s and was taken to the hospital. His condition right now is unknown tonight. Police on scene told us they had no suspect information to go on and the case remains under investigation. We've learned new details in a rollover crash, which not only sent one man to the hospital earlier this afternoon, but caused a major traffic backup. This crash happened near Fredericksburg Road in 410 East. Witnesses say the man was driving recklessly before he crashed into a barrier, which caused that SUV to roll over. It's still not clear what caused the man to crash, but San Antonio police say he was rushed to the hospital. His condition still unknown tonight. Traffic on 410 was backed up for about an hour, but roadways have since been cleared. Police tell us a man suffered a broken leg and head trauma after crashing his motorcycle on I-37 last night. That crash happened just before midnight near the Loop 410 entrance ramp. Police say the man was approaching the ramp when he hit the guardrail. Officers tell us he was then thrown from his bike and landed on the shoulder of I-37. He was taken to the hospital in serious condition. No other injuries were reported. New Braunfels police say a suspected drunk driver is dead after he threatened restaurant workers and nearly ran over officers before crashing and flipping his truck. The man has been identified now as Ryan Engel. Police say off-duty officers were working security last night outside the restaurant located in Green when everything started. Engel sped off from the area but was later found outside an apartment complex where officers say he then sped towards them. The officers say Engel crashed into another vehicle on Loop 337 and rolled his truck over and died at the scene. The other driver was not hurt. Let's take a look now at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Bear County. Health officials today announcing 116 new cases as well as 2,583 backlogged lab reports dating back to June 13th through September 29th. In addition, one new death was announced today, along with 16 backlog deaths dating back to July 8th through September 29th. 190 patients remain in local hospitals tonight with 83 in the ICU and 30 on ventilators. As day six of early voting comes to an end, 207,283 residents have already cast their ballots. That's according to the Bear County Elections Office. And a reminder, beginning tomorrow, early voting hours are extended in the evening. Monday through Saturday, polls will now be open from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. And on Sunday from noon to 6 p.m. For a list of polling locations and other resources, head to ksat.com slash vote 2020. It has been more than a year now since 23 people lost their lives in El Paso to a hate crime. 
Since that mass shooting, a film director has poured his blood, sweat and tears into a documentary in remembrance of those who died. The night team's Jaffney Gray tonight with what the director's passion is to end racism. There's not enough talk about this. Uh, when I hear BLM, uh, that's very important. Black Lives Matter, but sometimes I think of Brown Lives Matter. That's also BLM. August 3rd, 2019, this El Paso Walmart will become the target of one of the largest mass shootings in U.S. history. Authorities say the shooter drove hours from Dallas with a manifesto to target Mexicans. 23 people died while 23 others were injured. Left scars behind that will permanently be attached to this beautiful city of El Paso. Film director Charlie Mann created a documentary honoring Hispanics impacted not only by that shooting, but by injustices they face every day. I'm talking about a movement and attention that has to be put towards Hispanics being mistreated. He titled the documentary 915 Hunting Hispanics, where he educates viewers about what he calls an unknown tragedy. All El Pasoans know that something horrible inside, something horrible happened inside the Walmart, but they cannot get more specific than that. So if El Pasoans are left in the dark, I can only wonder what outsiders know about this tragedy. He says the film is very emotional and is intended to make you think. You guys are going to feel like you were there. Uh, this is brutal reality right in front of you. Real, raw, honest, transparent. Men says his goal is to inform, educate and raise awareness for change. Racism stinks. And uh, we have too many bigots out there. We have too many people waking up negative and bitter and nasty. Uh, you live once. Why live that way? We need some change. Now, 915 Hunting Hispanics made its debut in El Paso earlier this month, but it's expected to premiere right here in San Antonio this Friday. For example, here in Santico's Casablanca. Men said that a part of the proceeds raised during this entire process will go to the victims impacted by this tragedy. For more information on the other locations expected to showcase this film, be sure to visit this story on our website at ksat.com. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Good evening outside with live cam wrapping up another warm October weekend here in South Texas, just shy of 80 degrees at this hour under clear skies. And while we didn't break any temperature records today, we got awfully close. San Antonio's high temperature this afternoon, 92, just one degree shy of the old record for today's date, which is 93, set back in 2007. Del Rio, you tied your record high temperature for today with a high of 95, so plenty of heat out there this afternoon. Tomorrow, temperatures are going to be a bit wacky, depending on where you live. Could be a little bit cooler or it could be just as warm as it was today. We'll talk about a cold front that is going to stall out just north of San Antonio tomorrow coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you so much, Katie. Entertainers are probably not on the top of your mind when you consider the impact of this terrible pandemic, especially musicians who have been hit very hard. Country music singer songwriter Steve Warner told our Paul Venema he's finding a way to stay in touch with his fans and himself during these challenging times. For Steve Warner, this is what life has been like for decades, on stage performing to sell out audiences. But when the pandemic hit, it was just him and his guitar in his Nashville studio. Not a fan in sight. And at the end was you. Not getting to see the reaction and hearing the reaction from the people and the crowds, and that's terribly missed. To fill the void, he's found a way to keep in touch with those people. It's an interactive feature on his Facebook page he calls Warner Wednesday. <laughs> and people really like that. They like the stories. You know, I would tell stories about, oh, one time I was flying with Chad Atkins, we were whatever. Texans make up a big chunk of Warner's fan base. This is one of his favorite Texas stops, Floors Country Store in Helotus. He tells me he plans to be back on stage here once the pandemic ends. We always love playing Floors Country Store. That place is, uh, the history of that place is unreal. A big part of that history is country music legend Willie Nelson, who still plays here occasionally. Though Warner's biggest hits came during the 70s and 80s, he says his audiences are evidence that his music is still relevant. You look on the front row and there's young girls and they're all singing, we had some fun for the weekend. 
but I'll be in love for the rest of my life. Lyrics from one of his biggest hits. A true artist, if he isn't holding a guitar, Warner's probably holding a paintbrush to fill the time during these off-the-road days. I've really hunkered down and been painting a lot, and uh, I've been trying some things and studying some artists. Whether painting or picking, in spite of the pandemic, Warner is upbeat. I went away right now. I could go, man, it's just what a... What an incredible journey it's been. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time on Warner Wednesday. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. In August, San Antonio City Council members passed a resolution declaring racism is a public health crisis. But what does this declaration mean and what comes next? It's the topic of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. Myra Arthur now with a preview. I've been called the N-word to my face. It's not unusual for, for people to want to touch my hair at work. We're guilty until we're proven innocent because of the color of our skin. It's a reality many people live with day in and day out. Racism in our society is an undeniable problem we must face. A stark reminder of how far we have left to go came this summer when outrage over the death of George Floyd sparked global protests. <laughs> And in August, after a summer of demonstrations demanding an end to police brutality and racial inequality, the San Antonio City Council declared racism a public health crisis. It's a public health crisis because we know that racism has an impact on individual health. Where racism exists, health inequities exist. Right now, we're experiencing history. We are, being, we are a part of history because just the fact that um, we have our city recognizing that racism is a problem, that's a big deal. But some argue the city's declaration doesn't go far enough. The color of your skin is gonna di dictate everything. Still to come in the night, beat the number of states reporting spikes in COVID-19 continues to rise as the Trump administration continues to tout a vaccine is coming sooner rather than later. Plus, blinded by gun violence. In this week's What's Up South Texas, how a local man learned to accept life without sight and is now doing what he can to help his fellow neighbors. And we're a little more than two weeks away from Election Day and both candidates are now spending much of their time in key battleground states. The latest in the race for the White House right after this break. With just 16 days until the election, early voting records are being shattered with long lines seen at polls across the country. Yeah, trailing in the polls, President Donald Trump campaigning in Michigan and Nevada over the weekend, while his challenger, Joe Biden, took his message to voters in North Carolina. Here's ABC's Alex Prache with the details. The candidates hitting the campaign trail in some key battleground states with just over two weeks until Election Day. Joe Biden in North Carolina, criticizing the president for his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Experts say we're likely to lose as many as 200,000 additional lives nationwide between now and the end of the year. All because this president cares more about his Park Avenue perspective on the world, the stock market, than he does about you. Long lines forming at early voting sites, over 26 million Americans already casting their ballots. It's time that everyone gets out, exercises their right to vote, and vote what they feel is best for our country. The latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows Biden up by 12 points, the same margin Hillary Clinton led by at this point in October in 2016. The Biden campaign fearing a repeat of four years ago. With this warning in a memo to supporters, Donald Trump can still win this race, and we need to campaign like we're trailing. President Trump in Nevada Sunday, attending a church service in Las Vegas before heading to Carson City for a rally with supporters. 16 days from now, we're going to win the state of Nevada. We're going to win four more years in the White House. In Michigan on Saturday, the president criticizing the state's Democratic governor, Gretchen Whitmer. You got to get your governor to open up your state, okay? The schools have to be open, right? Lock them. Lock them all up. The FBI foiled an alleged plot to kidnap her, saying the suspects charged were angry over her lockdown restrictions. 
the president is at it again and inspiring and in incentivizing and um, inciting this kind of domestic terrorism. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. But here's what our never-ending summer continues. It started out pretty nice this morning, but then the <laughs> sun came out and it got hot pretty quick. Yeah, I usually have my fall clothes ready, and I'm just, I said, you know what? I don't care. I'm wearing pants. I don't care if it feels like 100 degrees. <laughs> There's know. nothing I can do about it. I Keep know. Them in storage. I know. Yeah, not, the, the weather is not being very seasonable uh, this weekend at least. Looking ahead the next several days, we're not going to see a whole lot of change, but there is a front in the forecast, so... Don't worry. There's actually a front in the forecast for tomorrow, but it's not going to help us out a whole lot. Um, and we're going to talk about it coming up in just a few minutes. I did want to show you the time lapse from today. We started off gray this morning, but yeah, Tim, like Tim said, as soon as we lost the clouds, things really started to warm up uh, later this afternoon. We're going to see a repeat of that pretty much all work week. Morning clouds, even a little bit of drizzle kicking in and then afternoon sunshine to help warm us up just a bit. So high temperatures today, 95 Del Rio, 92 here in San Antonio. But look up to the north and other portions of Texas. Uh, high temperatures in the Panhandle only in the 60s. And at this hour, there is some really cold air moving into North Texas. They're in the 30s in Amarillo, 51 in Abilene, into the low 60s in San Angelo. So there is a front moving into Texas. And normally this would be great news and we would be really excited. Unfortunately, I have to be the bearer of bad news here. This frontal boundary will continue to make some southward progress tonight and tomorrow, but it is going to stall out just to the north of San Antonio. So this is, this is not going to be one of those fronts that moves all the way through and gives all of us a nice shot of some cooler, drier air. Again, this looks to stall just to the north, and that is going to create a pretty big spread in our temperatures, especially by the back half of the day tomorrow. So overnight, into tomorrow morning, not a huge spread in temperatures. A lot of us will be in the upper 60s and low 70s. It will be humid and we'll have a lot of cloud cover in place. But as this frontal boundary drifts slowly south and again stalls out generally north of the Highway 90 corridor, we're going to start to see a pretty big spread in our temperatures tomorrow afternoon. So anywhere really hill country, Rock Springs all the way over to Gillespie County, Fredericksburg, even Austin, even New Braunfels, it looks like you guys could get some cooler air. And we are talking highs, maybe low 70s up in the hill country and then low 90s down to the south. Places like Carrizo Springs and Catula. I know that's showing upper 80s, but we could get into the low 90s tomorrow afternoon there. So big spread in temperatures tomorrow afternoon and then this time tomorrow evening models indicate that this boundary could just drop a little farther south and maybe coolest down here in San Antonio, but that wouldn't be until tomorrow evening. And for the most part, tomorrow is going to be pretty warm. So keep in mind your temperatures tomorrow afternoon dependent on where you are a little bit cooler well to the north up in the hill country, but still very warm for everyone else and and maybe back in the 90s well south of Highway 90. As far as cloud cover and rain goes, we'll see low clouds build back in tonight. A little bit of drizzle possible early tomorrow morning. As we get into the afternoon, the trend will be that the cloud cover will start to clear out just a bit, but I do think we'll keep even partly cloudy skies into the afternoon and early evening hours and then late tomorrow. Clouds build back in and we'll do the whole low clouds and drizzle thing again on Tuesday morning. Speaking of Tuesday, while our temperatures will be kind of odd tomorrow afternoon because of this stalled frontal boundary by Tuesday, that will lift off to the north as a warm front and everyone will see more uniform temperatures as we get into Tuesday afternoon and the rest of the week. Unfortunately, that means everyone will be quite warm. We'll be in the mid to uh, upper 80s, I should say upper 80s, low 90s for our afternoon temperatures this week, again, falling into that pattern of morning clouds and drizzle and then afternoon sun. So your day tomorrow here in town, 85 in the afternoon, but keep in mind, if you're up in the hill country, you could be a little bit cooler. If you're well to the south, you could be in the low 90s again tomorrow. So through the end of the work week, not much change, but we do have a front that we're watching that should arrive for the start of next weekend. That would cool all of us down. So that's the one where we're really cheering on that one toward the end of the week. We, we can root for that. Yes. I mean, it could be worse. It's upper 80s, not yeah. upper 90s. Yeah, I know. It's only October. <laughs> I'll be positive, though. We'll be right back. The Dallas Cowboys prepare to host former Aggie and now Arizona Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray, who hasn't lost in AT&T Stadium in high school or in college and will now try for a win in the NFL on Monday night with more on that and what's on instant replay tonight. Let's check in with our Greg Simmons. Three time state high school champion in Texas yeah. and won three games with both the Sooners and the Aggies as well in college. 
Now, Houston Texans have a chance to beat the undefeated Titans in Tennessee in regulation, but a controversial two-point conversion call leads to overtime and a loss. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Watson throwing. Touchdown! Everyone thought that after scoring this touchdown right there in the fourth quarter, the Houston Texans were going to kick the extra point and make this an eight-point ball game. But in interim head coach Romeo Cornell calls for a two-point try, and the Texans fail. The Titans would come back to score the tying touchdown, kick the extra point, and force overtime, and end the loss. Now that decision has Cornell facing the big question, why? I like everything that we're doing, and, uh, you know, just my job is to, uh, you know, just keep this thing going exactly how, how Dak had it. All right, the Dallas Cowboys host the Arizona Cardinals tomorrow night, where it will be a Texas reunion. Former TCU quarterback Andy Dalton will making his first start of the game as the Cowboys quarterback after the season-ending injury to Dak Prescott. And Kyler Murray returns to AT&T Stadium, where he's 6-0 on both high school and college as a former quarterback for both the Aggies and the Oklahoma Sooners. And he's bringing with him former New Braunfels High School, Texas Tech quarterback and head coach, now Arizona coach Cliff Kingsbury with him. Hey, come on, baby. Hey, 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 put on the show. All right, after a wild Friday of cancellation and postponements, we still have plenty to show you tonight in the best of big game coverage. You had the best pass, the best catch, and even the best run. We will show you an all-new 12 top 12 and sub-5 day 12 top 12 as well. And how many more games will the Cowboys win now with Andy Dalton as their starting quarterback? Tonight you decide. Instant Replay is live, and it's right after the night beat. Lots to talk about, lots to stay up for. We're getting ready for it. All right, Greg, we'll see you again in just a little bit. We'll see you right after this break. With no definitive word on when a vaccine for COVID-19 will be available, the president announcing a new partnership to distribute any future vaccine to nursing homes. But governors have questions about how a vaccine will be allocated. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt with the details. As we head into the holiday season, new cases of coronavirus are on the rise in 39 states and Washington, D.C. Much of the country logging dire numbers, with hospitalizations climbing in 41 states and deaths rising in 14. President Trump announcing on Friday a partnership with Walgreens and CVS to facilitate the distribution of a vaccine to nursing homes. We would send teams of pharmacists and pharmacy technicians uh, to nursing homes and um, uh, people would uh, basically be providing their consent to be vaccinated and then we'd go through the nursing home and uh, provide that initial vaccination. There's still no definitive timeline for when a vaccine will be available. The National Governors Association has sent a list of three dozen questions to the Trump administration about the implementation of any future vaccine. How will the vaccine be allocated to states? In other words, are you going to allocate it by infection rate? Are you going to allocate it by number of cases of COVID? Are you going to allocate it by population? New York is now using block by block COVID cluster tracking. The state rolling out record testing and seeing a low positivity rate. Dr. Anthony Fauci in an interview with CBS 60 Minutes says a national lockdown would only be necessary if the situation became really, really bad. Acknowledging everyone is fatigued with restrictions. We want to use public health measures not to get in the way of opening the economy, but to being a safe gateway to opening the economy. And public health officials like Dr. Fauci are already asking Americans to scale back their plans for Thanksgiving as even smaller gatherings are being identified as a major source of viral spread. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Now, Speaker Nancy Pelosi is setting a 48-hour deadline to approve a stimulus deal for coronavirus relief before the election. On Sunday, Pelosi said negotiations with Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin would still continue after Tuesday if a deal isn't reached, but it wouldn't get done in time before Election Day. She talked about the 48-hour deadline on ABC's This Week. 48 only relates to if we want to get it done before the election, which we do. Well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so which we do. But we're saying to them, we have to freeze the design on some of these things. Are we going with it or not? And what is the language? I'm optimistic. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced yesterday votes on stimulus measures on Tuesday and Wednesday. But Democrats who are expected to block McConnell's effort have been pushing for a larger deal. 
Twitter has removed a tweet from President Trump's coronavirus advisor, which the company says undermined the importance of masks. Dr. Scott Atlas of the White House Coronavirus Task Force wrote in a tweet yesterday, quote, masks work? No, end quote. Dr. Atlas then followed with a series of misrepresentations about the science behind the effectiveness of masks in combating the pandemic. According to Twitter, Atlas violated its policy prohibiting sharing false or misleading content related to COVID-19, which could lead to harm. Atlas's tweet echoes President Donald Trump's misleading claims about masks, even as the U.S. grapples with new spikes in cases. Another look outside tonight with live cam. Skies are clear for now, but just like the past couple of mornings, we're going to have plenty of cloud cover out there by tomorrow morning, just shy of 80 degrees at this hour. We have had a pretty nice breeze in place today. That's helping us out because our dew point is pretty elevated, so it actually feels a couple of degrees warmer than it actually is at this hour, so we're thankful for that uh, little bit of a breeze. Overnight, those clouds are going to build back in, and um, that's going to get us off to a pretty warm and muggy start tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, temperatures are going to vary widely depending on where you are across South Texas. We're going to talk about a stalled front arriving tomorrow. After that, everybody gets a warm and muggy work week before some welcome changes by next weekend. Another look at your forecast to get you ready for the week coming up in just a bit. Thanks, Katie. Still ahead. He lost his vision to gun violence, but it hasn't stopped him from leading or lending a happily helping hand to his neighbors. What's up, South Texas is next. He spent years giving back to his neighborhood through his lawn care services, but what makes him unique is he has a disability caused by a horrific shooting decades ago. Roland Gomez is our next feature on What's Up South Texas. The night team's Jaffney Gray shares his story, his obstacle, and his perseverance. I don't like being inside of a building, you know. I'd rather do outside work. Construction and yard work is 57-year-old Roland Gomez's bread and butter. Get this, he's 100% blind. I do some crazy stuff. <laughs> I tell you no lie. <laughs> See, I've, I've, been, I've been on top of uh, people's houses, on top of the roof, cutting down tree limbs, you know. But he hasn't been in the dark all of his life. On May 12th, 1991. You could hear him, you know, coming up from, from Culebra all the way down the street, you know. At the young age of 28. I was outside getting the mail from the, from the mailbox. And then this truck drove by and just started shooting and I got hit in the head. <coughs> Knocked out my eye sockets. Things went black for Roland. My grandkids, you know, I, I never seen them sighted. Uh, the, 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 I would love to see them. I miss by sight. I do miss it. Uh, but uh, thanks to God, yeah, I've, I've been doing okay without it. With the help of his community, the transition to life without his sight wasn't hard. Staying positive has also helped. And I, I must have had a bunch of angels around me because, uh, it, 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 like I say, look, look, it didn't do nothing bad. <laughs> Before going blind. Started drinking, started doing drugs, you know. Uh, it, it, it was, uh, everything was just up to no good. Roland says the biggest blessing of losing his sight was that it changed both his life and the life of gang members at that time in his neighborhood. They all took off their jackets and caps and everything else, you know. For years, Roland has helped with lawn work and building projects for his neighbors. I get, I get other things that I find around and then I use those for measurement, like for, for instance, my walking cane. His faith in God drives him as well. Anytime I go out there and do something, I know I got his sight, you know, and uh, he's always with me. Roland hopes his story encourages others, blind or not, to never make excuses. That's a beautiful sight for What's Up South Texas. You can't let no obstacles, like you say, uh, 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 getting your, uh, in your way, stopping you from doing what you got to do, you know. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. Great work he's doing. Coming up next on the Night Beat, help for your headaches. A look at some ways to reduce frequency and methods to help treat them.
Did you know there are about 200 types of headaches? Tension headaches and migraines can make you miserable and have you reaching for medication. But as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains, there is evidence that simple lifestyle changes can help prevent a headache. Teresa Robinson suffers from terrible tension headaches. They come on suddenly. Sometimes it's to the point where I can't lift my head up. I have missed work, family functions, birthday parties, hanging out with the family, barbecues. Nearly a quarter of women and about 12% of men ages 18 to 44 have recently suffered from a migraine or other severe headache, according to a national survey. If you suffer from recurring headaches, it's important to talk to your doctor to try to figure out the cause. Many headaches don't have a clear cause, but migraine headaches sometimes have a trigger that people can identify, like stress, hormonal changes, or dehydration. Over-the-counter and prescription medications can help, but they can also have side effects. So prevention is key, finding ways to head off a headache before it even starts. There is evidence that shows that simple lifestyle changes can help prevent headaches. Those are things like keeping consistent meal times, bedtimes, and wake times, and also staying hydrated. 20 minutes of aerobic exercise has been found to decrease the frequency and severity of migraines. Your doctor can also suggest some other treatments like physical therapy, biofeedback, and acupuncture. In the meantime, there's Teresa's method a hot or warm compress over my eyes and just lay there still. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, I know that very, very well. Yeah, the headache is from working with me. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I would love to say that, but it's been longer than that, Tim. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> but you know, one of the things that is my main trigger, because sometimes, like they were saying, it's really difficult to find out what it is. It's the weather pattern, oh, yes. the yes. changes, the pressure. Mm -hmm. I kind of know when I'm going to get one. Like, to, you know, this weekend, when you said there was one coming, I took Excedrin when I woke up, and it helped. Good. Back and forth does not help. No. <laughs> no, that doesn't that doesn't help at all on top of the allergies and, and everything else. So, um, yeah, we're in for a warm and muggy week. We do have a couple of fronts to talk about. One tomorrow. It's not going to do a whole lot for a lot of us, but one toward the end of the week, that one's looking better. As for your Monday, getting everybody out the door in the morning, it will be cloudy. Our skies are clear now, and they were clear all this afternoon, but we're going to bring those low clouds back in early tomorrow morning. A little bit of drizzle will be possible as well. Temperatures in the low 70s. Tomorrow afternoon, 85, warm and humid. That 85 is for here in San Antonio. We're going to have a spread in temperatures tomorrow afternoon, and we are going to take another look at that coming up. Just shy of 80 degrees here in town right now. Mid 70s up in the Hill Country, still at 84 in Del Rio, 81 in Carrizo Springs. Our dew point numbers are up there, 60s and 70s for a lot of us. These numbers were so low on Friday behind that frontal battery that came in late Thursday. They were down in the 40s and 50s and now they're back up so it's feeling pretty humid out there and really this week things are going to stay muggy for the next several days essentially through the end of the work and school week through Friday but look what happens Friday into Saturday gold front comes all the way through South Texas and we'll drop our dew points for the start of next week and it will also help to cool us down um, just a little bit so there is some some hope in the forecast here. We've just got to get through what's going to be a warm and muggy work week outside with live cam now. No clouds yet, but like I mentioned, we'll bring those low clouds in back early tomorrow morning. Elsewhere across Texas, pretty quiet. Hey, there's some snow up across portions uh, of Iowa there into Nebraska and the Dakotas up in Montana as well. So some cold air well to our north and there's actually a cold front that's really not too far away at this hour, dropping temperatures across a portion of the Lone Star State. Down Dallas was in the upper 80s this afternoon. They're in the upper 60s now, so this front is packing a punch. It's a fairly shallow front, but it does have a really good temperature gradient with it. It's dropping temperatures about 20 degrees behind it, and uh, unfortunately, this is not going to clear San Antonio and South Texas. We do expect this to stall out just to the north of San Antonio and Highway 90 tomorrow afternoon. So pretty uniform temperatures in the morning, upper 60s, low 70s. But by the afternoon, we could have easily a 20 degree temperature spread. So low 90s down well to the south of Highway 90 and then some spots in the hill country dropping 
into the low 70s. We're going kind of middle of the road here in San Antonio and along Highway 90 mid 80s there. Um, this is according to our forecast model that typically handles these kinds of shallow cold fronts pretty well. So we feel very confident that we're going to see this temperature spread. Um, but check in with Mike tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio. He'll have the very latest model data for you. And then throughout the day, we'll be sending you updates via the KSAT weather app, letting you know what's going on because it's going to be just kind of a weird day temperature wise tomorrow. As far as the cloud cover goes again, we'll start off gray tomorrow morning, a little bit of drizzle possible, and I think through midday things will stay fairly cloudy. We'll get the cloud cover to break up a little bit in the afternoon, but still partly cloudy for your Monday and then low clouds building back in again by Tuesday morning. So mentioned we have a better front later this week. All the way through Friday, we'll be in the upper 80s, low 90s in the afternoons. But by the start of next weekend, stronger, more progressive cold front will move through, meaning everyone will get a shot at some cooler air. And hey, that'll put our afternoon highs in the upper 70s by the start of next weekend. That's a lot more like it, guys. That is a lot more like it. We'll wait for the end of the week. We'll be right back. Do stay for supper. I'm not hungry. Oh, but we are. Hocus Pocus may run out of steam before Halloween. The re-released witchy comedy fell to fifth place with just $756,000. What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. What's this? There's white things in the air. The re-release of The Nightmare Before Christmas debuted in fourth place, scaring up $1.3 million. I'm not saying I'm again here. No. Something worse. Tenet fell to number three, taking in $1.6 million, which put the time-twisting adventure over $50 million domestic. Give me back what is mine or face the consequences. Okay. Okay. After one weekend on top, the war with Grandpa dropped to second place. Two and a half million dollars gave the family comedy a 10-day total of $7.3 million. My girlfriend, she had nothing to do with this. Agent Evans. I'm coming for you. Bad guys still haven't learned not to cross Liam Neeson. The action star plays a reformed criminal who goes after the crooked feds, keeping him from clearing his name in Honest Thief, which made an honest $3.7 million to claim the box office crown. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Those choices might explain why there's not a lot of people going to the theaters. All right, the fight in Texas Aggies win in Starkville for the first time since 2012 to improve to three and one. And the UTSA Roadrunners may have lost more than just their third game in a row. With more, let's head over to Greg Simmons on What's On Instant Replay tonight. They could have lost another quarterback, unfortunately. And Showtime debuts a documentary on the AAA baseball team that plays in Laredo and Nuevo Laredo called Bad Hombres, coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. He's able to beat Mike Leach in his air raid offense at Mississippi State, 28 to 14. The Aggies' first win in Starkville in eight years, and it comes behind San Antonio's own Kellen Mon, who threw two touchdowns out of the defense and came up with six big sacks. Meantime, the UTSA Roadrunners dropped their third game to Army on Saturday, 28 to 16, and they may have lost a quarterback for the rest of the season. I love playing. I love the fans, uh, the atmosphere uh, that they bring over there in Mexico. Uh, it's a totally different game down there. This past Friday, Showtime debuted its documentary called Bad Hombres. They follow a triple-A baseball team that plays in both Laredo and Nuevo Laredo, and part of the film also shows the differences between baseball games played in the United States and Mexico. And the fallout from the controversy over the Eyes of Texas school song. Has Tom Herman lost his team? The sports guys are back tonight with their opinions. And did interim head coach Romeo Cornell lose the game for the Texans with a controversial call in regulation? We will show you. Instant Replay is live, and it's next, and we'll ask him about that as well. We'll look forward to the answer. <laughs> Thank it. you, Greg. You we'll be right back. Stay with us.